Ira. Mm -hmm. I uh, want to bring it up to you because you cover what I think is the most, uh, the best basketball coach we've ever had in this town. Yes, I said it. Yes, I said it. Okay. Um, the best basketball coach we've ever had in town and uh, his versatility, uh, the way he has handled so many different rosters that are completely different from one to another. And everyone has success with this man. Okay. Uh, which is effing impressive, by the way, right. on top of all of that. And I think, uh, you know, you know, I'm a huge Spo believer. And so I've had this conversation with several people out there. And does Belichick kind of get exposed now? Because he can't do jack shit without Tom Brady. And, you know, Shula didn't win the Super Bowl with the Colts, but he got to the Super Bowl with the Colts. He won it with the Dolphins. But then he got there again with Woodstock, and he got there again with Marino. So four different teams he got to a Super Bowl with, won it twice with with a group of one. You know, I look at Andy Reid. I look at Phil Jackson. I, you know, I, I can go on and on and talk about Larry Brown. Wherever he went, the team went to the playoffs. Even if it was the, the, the freaking Clippers he took to the playoffs. Um, you know, great coaches. Saban wins a championship at LSU and then wins it at Alabama. You know, if you're a great coach, you will show your colors constantly with different people. What's going on in New England? Does this take away from his accomplishments? And have we taken the lazy route by calling him the GOAT simply because of the six rings? Football is different than basketball, right? Like in football, and you know this better than I do, especially in the NFL, you need a, a really good quarterback to be good. Like you just, that's the most important position in the sport. And in basketball, you need one really good player to probably be a playoff team. And Eric Spolcher's had that in Jimmy Butler, who's a top 10 player in the top 10 two way player in the league. Patriots, Mac Jones, not a very good quarterback, right? I think we've come to. Nobody this. gets Jimmy Butler to the Eastern Conference Finals three out of no, four. No, I'm not taking the credit away from, from, uh, from Eric Spolcher. He's maximized Jimmy, but Jimmy is a top 10 talent. He just is. He's, he's yeah, an but he maximizes um, right. LeBron. He maximizes. Bosh, right? He, you know, you know what I'm saying that. Yeah, but those, are, but those were all-star caliber players before they arrived to the Heat, right? Even but Jimmy was an all-star before. Those guys you make better. That's yeah. impressive, yeah. actually. Sure. sure. You know sure. What I'm saying. For sure. No, that's. I mean, it's a fair point. Um, I think we can't forget what, about what Belichick did for so as long as he did. Obviously, we we're now real. Kind of, it's confirmed to us that Tom Brady had a big hand in that, right? Um, and the weapons Tom Brady had. I mean, having Gronk for as long as he did uh, was huge. For he Tom didn't Brady. have great you know, No, he, he, had, great he had a really, he had an all-time tight end and solid receivers. He had Wes Welker, who was obviously a very good receiver for a long time, a slot receiver. But he didn't have, you know, Randy Moss for what a couple years. Yeah, I didn't win it. He didn't win he it with Moss. Right, right, they lost in the Super Bowl, um, but. Yeah, I just think it comes down to not having a really not having a good quarterback, right? I mean, yes, you could blame some of it on Bill Belichick for sure, but there's only so much you could do when you don't have the talent you need to win games in the NFL at that position. You, you know, Shula got to the Super Bowl with Wood Strzok. It's a different, but you know, the, the sport's different now. Big, the big quarterback is like more more important than ever now. No, but, but hey, no, but. Baltimore got there with Trent Dilfer. Bro, Peyton Manning couldn't throw the ball for yeah. 10 yards. Yeah. For when that defense led the way, yeah. No, that's true. That's fair. I'm just saying, you got to show me something. Yeah, that's fair. No, Bro, he can't make the playoffs. Yeah, well, they're getting blown out. Yeah, I mean. It's, it's... No, no, he can't make the playoffs at all without Tom Brady. Right. He, you know, that that's pretty bad, dude. That's yeah. why I'm saying that. Like, you got to show me something, dude. Yeah. Without Tom Brady. You have shown me nothing with Tom Brady. And I see great coaches all the time. They show me something, dude. Right. If you win eight, at least nine games or something like that, fight for a playoff spot. Um, sneak into the playoffs. Sneak get, into get the into playoffs, the playoffs, yeah. 
Right, right. And I think the expectation was, I mean, not in this division, it would have been tough, but that they would be like an eight or nine win team, maybe be on the bubble, you know, in those last few weeks of getting to the playoffs. But as we've seen the last month, they're not a playoff team, <laughs> not even close. No. Yeah. And that, that's why that's why we have to be so appreciative of the guy you watch, you oh, cover yeah. every day and we watch because what Spo does every single year is just, it's ridiculous, bro. Yeah, no, he's great at what he does. And it's you like know, you said, he's he's a versatile coach. He's willing to mold his system around the personnel he has. Right. And that is the trait of a really good coach. Right, right. And that's what Shula did. Yeah. The the greasy team was completely different than Woodstock, and the Woodstock team was completely different than Marino. And, and so he changed depending on what he had. And to me, that's, you know, I look at Larinaga and Coral Gables, bro. He does the same shit all the time. You know what I mean? It's like his teams change every three, four years, and and he's ready, and they're completely different. And to me, that's that's the greatness of a coach is mm -hmm. that the guy that can turn over rosters and still find a way to win and change things up, and that's why I, I kind of hold it against him. So who's going to be our surprise mm -hmm. player this year? Who's the young guy? Who's the undrafted player? Who's the guy that's going to take that that step that is going to all of a sudden, you know, like, wow, they found somebody else? Who yeah. is it? Tyler Hero. No, I'm kidding. Um, I think I do think Tyler Hero is going to be better this year. And I, I, my bold prediction for this season is Tyler Hero is going to lead the team in scoring. He's going to average the most points on the team, which he hasn't done yet in his career. But if we're going to go to, like, a, a new face – a guy who really hasn't done anything in the NBA yet. I would point to Cole Swider, who um, is on an Exhibit Ten contract. He doesn't have a he doesn't have a job yet, right? A full time job yet in the NBA. He's try basically on a tryout contract, trying to earn either a two way deal or maybe the last roster spot. Um, he's regular season roster. Um, he's really impressed. He's kind of uh, the fact that Bam and Eric Spolstra have both compared Cole Swider to Duncan Robinson, um, it, say, it says something. You can say what you want about Duncan, but for them to compare him to Duncan, it, it's meaningful. Um, he's a really good shooter, 6'9", with size, can shoot, you know, spot up, a sh uh, good spot up shooter, can shoot on the move, um, which the Heat love. Um, so here looking to replace Max Struess, right? And Duncan is going to have a much bigger role and kind of fill that void. But keep an eye on Cole Swider. Um, We'll see, you know, what kind, you know, if he earns a spot in the Heat's roster. But it looks like he's, you know, on track at least impressing them. And probably, I would be surprised if they don't at least give him a two-way deal at this point. Um, he played last year with the Lakers on a two-way deal, um, and now is in the Heat's developmental system. And that's the kind of guy that he'd love—a guy who could shoot um, and has size. A little stretch four action. Yeah, I mean, look, it's the same thing as Duncan, right? Where defense is not his strength, um, so that's something he has to overcome. Um, but he could, I mean, he is an awesome shooter. Um, and you need guys like that around Jimmy and Bam. We say it all the time, right? You need, you can't have enough shooting around those two guys. Um, he could do that. So, um, he's not a perfect player by any means. He's not a finished product. He's, he went undrafted out of Syracuse last year. Um, again, defense is going to be a little bit of an issue. I don't expect him to play big minutes immediately, but just because of his skill set, I mean, if I had to pick one guy, I'd pick him. You know, for me, uh, with Tyler, you you said something really interesting. My thing with Tyler is kids stay healthy. Mm -hmm. You know, I kind of know who you are, and I don't know if you'll take that next step to become an all-star or whatever. Uh, to me, it's about staying healthy because you haven't been able to finish seasons, and this team has made runs without you. But what you said, man, would that be a welcome for Jimmy Butler? Because yeah. if he can lead the team in scoring, then that would lift a burden, you know, from Butler because he has to, you know, carry this team. And really, offensively, he's not built for that, dude. You know, the guy you were trying to trade for, that's the guy that could help you do those kind of things. And outside of being healthy, that would be the thing. I don't need you to necessarily be an all-star or whatever, but if you could lead this team in scoring, I got to tell you, Anthony, that would be a real blessing for, for Jimmy Butler. Yeah, and I think, look, 
I'm not comparing Tyler Hero to Damian Lillard. Damian Lillard is one of the top 75 players of all time. He's a future Hall of Famer. But there's a reason why the Heat were trying to trade for Damian Lillard. They want a go-to guy on offense to take some of the pressure off of Jimmy. They want a not, you know, a guy who's gonna could score 30 a game um, on any given night and is gonna put up 15 to 20 shots a game. Um, and Tyler can do that. So I, I think he sees that. I think he sees that look, the Heat, this team feels like they're missing that. I could be that. Um, and I think it's um, also says something that when we talked with Spo last week about the point guard position, and Spo says, well, Kyle Lowry obviously is Hall of Fame, you know, Hall of Fame caliber point guard, has had a Hall, had a Hall of Fame career. He pointed to Josh Richardson as a guy who could play point guard. He pointed to Drew Smith on a two-way deal who could play some minutes at point guard. He did not talk about Tyler Hero, right? And Tyler Hero can play point guard if we need him to. Um, but I think the thinking, you know, the thinking is we're not going to put Tyler Hero in that role. He, we're going to put him in a role where he could score. Um, and I, I think it's uh, it's telling that he didn't list Tyler Hero on that list of guys who, who you know, the Heat have tried a point guard in camp. They want Tyler Hero to be um, put up shots. They want Tyler Hero to score. They want him to be more efficient this year. So I really think that there is a good chance he's going to put up career years. It might, the efficiency might be down a little bit because he's taking more shots, um, but I think he's going to score a lot this season. All right, let's hope so, because that would be absolutely huge. Uh, just out of uh, curiosity, are are the uh, Heat going to trade for Kai Jones since he, he wants out? I don't think so. I don't see that one coming. No, I, I don't see that. And, also, and, and I saw someone point this out. I think it's against the CBA. You can't yeah. publicly uh, no. request a trade. <laughs> so you uh, find 150000 or some yeah. shit like that. Yeah, it's a it's a tough that's a tough situation, obviously. And Charlotte's here tonight, so I'm sure the coach will get some questions about that uh, before the game, right? Because I don't think he's spoken to the media since Kai Jones made that uh, request over Twitter. Um, but yeah, that's a that's a tricky situation for sure. So uh, give me uh, some news on the red, white, pink game. Well, how'd it go? Um, it was basically like an all star game. Very little defense played. I think there was one foul committed. Jimmy Butler was shooting, taking shots with his left hand, with his eyes closed. Um, so there really weren't a ton of takeaways uh, from the game, like serious takeaways. But um, I guess the one thing is Caleb Martin did not play. He's the only guy who did not take part. He has a little bit of a, a knee issue that he's been battling for the last month or so. And they're trying to – it hasn't really gotten better. So they're trying to to rest it. Obviously, now's the time to rest it, right? You have a couple weeks before the – regular season i would not expect him to play tonight in the preseason opener um so that's something to watch because we all know caleb martin is probably the fourth best player on the team at this point right um they need him healthy uh so not a great start but i think you know the hope is that it is it's, it seems minor right now but we'll see how it evolves uh over the next uh, few weeks before the regular season how did hakez look he looked good. I mean, he didn't shoot well from three. I think it was two and nine on threes, which is going to be an important, you know, that's going to be important to how much, how much playing time he gets. Can he make threes consistently? Uh, but he showed off his athleticism. We know he's athletic, right? We've talked about it. His vert was uh, uh, was was really good in, in the combine. Um, he threw down like four or five dunks. Um, so you see the skill set. Um, but yeah, he's going to have to obviously get better, continue to get better as a shooter. Defense is going to be big for him. Um, but you definitely see that you know he he could jump. He has some hops. I, he was asked after the game if he thinks he's the best dunker on the on the team. He said no. He still gives up to Bam, uh, but he's definitely one of the top dunkers on the team. Yeah, uh, no doubt. He impressive young man. Um, what what are you predicting for this team this year? Someone asked me last week, and I just I spit out forty seven wins, probably a little bit high. It would be 47 and 35, right? And it all depends on health. But I still think this team, if they're healthy, could be the third best team in the East. And from everything we've heard in camp, and everything we heard in camp, Eric Spolcher players, they, they want to be more intentional, intentional about winning more games in the regular season. They felt like last year they kind of relaxed a little bit. Um, they want to they wanna be better in the regular season. So for that reason, and because I still think they have third or fourth best roster in the East, uh, I would say 47 wins in that range if they can stay relatively healthy. Yeah, I think you're playing with fire if you think you're going to go eight again and then climb all the way yeah, back. Yeah, that's an, that's an outlier. That's not going to happen. You can't, you can't do that again, no. 
yeah. and then you got to go through the playing round and what happens yeah. if somebody gets injured and whatever and and you get out in one game and you're in that and no dude you don't want to do that stuff again no. um you know but then again how much is jimmy butler going to play is he going to miss a quarter of the season yeah well that's a big question right that's that's that's, that's, that's the reason yeah. why number eight seed because he missed yeah. A quarter of the season, he missed like twenty games. Yeah, and I wouldn't. I mean, he's gonna miss at least ten games, right? Between back to backs and all that, he's gonna miss at least ten. And then if you throw in there a minor injury, that's fifteen to twenty games. Yeah. So you're looking around twenty games. He's probably gonna miss. I mean, that's just a given with Jimmy. He's not gonna play seventy five games. It's just not gonna happen at this stage of his career. And honestly, I get it, right? Like he needs. To, we saw we need him to be fresh for the playoffs. They need him to be fresh for the playoffs. What's your record um, with that this last year? I forget. It wasn't good. The year before yeah. was okay. The year before, when they were the one seed, um, they somehow won without him a lot, and they won without him and Bam because so many guys were stepping up in their absence. Um, but last year was not a, it was not good with without him. Yeah, yeah, that's why you ended up in eight seed. Yeah, yeah. All right, follow him on Twitter at Anthony underscore Chang. Catch his work there at the Miami Herald. What do you got going on on the Herald, sir? Yeah, I'll have a takeaways from the preseason opener tonight. We'll see who plays, who doesn't play. Um, you know, all, obviously all eyes will be in the starting lineup. If the regulars are out there, we'll, we'll see who starts, who's in the rotation. Um, I expect most guys in uniform probably to play tonight. They're going to give you know, probably a lot of second half run to guys in the back end of the roster. Uh, so it'll be interesting. It's our first look, first extended look at what this could look like. Um, so check it out tonight. I'll have takeaways from that. And, you know, even tomorrow morning, if it's too late for you, Wake up, go to MiamiHerald.com and read my takeaways from the preseason opener. There it is, Anthony Chang. Anthony, as always, I appreciate you, my brother. We will uh, catch up later on in the week. Thanks, Big O. You got it. There you go. Uh, our BaptistHealth.net slash ortho Miami Heat report and the staff at Baptist Health Orthopedic Care is comprised of highly specialized board certified and fellowship trained orthopedic physicians supported by advanced practice providers and athletic trainers, all of whom play a vital role in the patient's experience. Baptist Health Orthopedic Care has locations from Monroe to Palm Beach County.